Area 51, the epicenter of secrecy, where the line between science fiction and reality blurs. For decades, it's been synonymous with unexplained sightings and whispers of alien technology. Now, someone has risked everything. Photos, smuggled from within its heavily guarded walls, hint at a staggering truth. Are these stolen images undeniable proof? Evidence that will force us to question everything we believe about the universe? <laughs> A 30-second video from Jharkhan is going viral all over the internet. In the video, a strange, eerie-looking human figure can be seen strolling down the road. The video was apparently recorded on the Chhadwa Dam Bridge in the Hazaribagh district by some bikers. Seeing that, some are saying that it is an alien and some are claiming it to be a ghost. After the appearance, there has been a war on the social media sites among the people to determine the exact type of supernatural being that the creature is. Maybe it's a ghost alien. Maybe it's a ghost and an alien. A ghost alien. Why is it so creepy? Like, it's so lanky and weird. But at the same time, I feel like aliens are more stealthy than that, you know? Like, I feel like it wouldn't just be walking like, oh, da -da -da -da, hey, yo, what's up? You know, like just for everyone to see. They've been stealthy and hiding themselves for years, potentially, uh, on Earth. So why would they just reveal themselves now? Doesn't really make sense. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe, maybe it's just, he's just not a good alien. Maybe that's what it is. But it's really creepy. Like, it's, it was, legs were so, Skinny, like that did not look like a human. That looked like a creature of some sort. Ugh. Also, alien, if you're watching this video, just kidding, you're beautiful, love you. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh. What the hell? That strange light in the sky is one of 1,100 UFO sightings in Canada last year. According to the annual survey released by Ufology Research of Manitoba, there are at least three such sightings in the country every day. UFO reports are still a thing. People are reporting them in greater and greater numbers every year. I'm never going to BC. It's beautiful there. And I was like, I want to go this summer. Yeah. Three sightings of UFOs per day. Yeah, that's where they're hiding. They're hiding in the wilderness there. Them and, and the Bigfoot, they're just hiding there together. Or maybe that was Bigfoot roaming through the forest shining his flashlight. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe it's not even an alien after all. Maybe it's Bigfoot. <laughs> hey everyone, what's up? And welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan. And today we are looking at the top 10 real alien encounters caught on camera and it's pretty spooky so far. And if you guys believe in aliens, then make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Also comment something down below because I like to read your comments. That being said, let's dive on into the video. Just about quarter to five and take a look at this viral video from La Junta in southeastern Colorado. All right, Vivian Gomez wrote on Facebook that her security camera captured this on Sunday morning. There are people on Facebook who say it looks like Dobby from Harry Potter or a ghost or an alien or a kid in flip-flops and underwear. Maybe that. Maybe it's a kid in flip-flops and underwear. Like, na 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 I can't see an alien doing the chicken dance. It has to be a kid. Come on. But also, it does look like Dobby. It's not Dobby. Dobby. Why did, I feel like she said it weird. Anyways, it does look like Dobby from Harry Potter. That is a house elf for sure, okay? He was like, Harry Potter must not come to Hogwarts. Bad Dobby, bad Dobby. And then that was him leaving after the cake got. If you know Harry Potter, then you know. What the hell is that? Ew. Oh, I literally got the sh the, sh the shills. <laughs> I literally got the chills watching that. Like this alien was trying to be stealthy and hide behind some tombstones, but it wasn't working. Look at its head. That is massive. That's a massive alien head. That is terrifying. That is, that's, that's like the creature from Predator. I'm sorry. I don't like that thing at all. That cemetery needs to be burned down. I, it, no, just no. <laughs> It doesn't look like a plane, it looks like a saucer. I just don't get it. It's 
someone help me figure this one out. I mean, if you think that looks like a plane, uh, I just don't get it. I, I, I'm looking at it carefully. And of course, you know, I'm driving in the middle of traffic. Uh, I'm trying to get as close as I can to it. And I just cannot figure out what the hell I'm looking at. That is for sure a UFO. Like that literally looks like a spacecraft. Either that or it's Ron and Harry going to Hogwarts in their flying car. <laughs> That's also what it looks like. Man, we got the freaking house elf and now we got, like this is just confirmation that Hogwarts is real. Hogwarts is real, man. Yo, wizard Harry. Yo, wizard Lindsay. Wish I was. Without a cadaver. Lindsay Porter. <laughs> That is an alien. That's an alien. Either that or someone is really good at special effects and has a really expensive alien costume. Because it doesn't really make sense to me. Wouldn't an alien like be like, oh snap, there's a human or something and make them forget? You know, like the men in black, how they have the little flashy light. I feel like an alien just like points at you and then you forget that you saw an alien. Wouldn't you think, like this is just too casual, him just, oh hey, what's up? Yeah, you can videotape me. Make sure you get this angle. Yeah, I'll just do my slow model walk. You know, like it doesn't make sense to me. Also, this alien looks like the one from Scooby-Doo. It's with the green humanoid head. That's eh. Scooby-Doo, anyway. Item number seven is NASA's golden record. Yeah, I'm talking about the Voyager golden records, basically those groovy golden disks that got launched into space in 1977. For those of you who don't know, the NASA Voyager is the first man-made object to ever leave our solar system. And so scientists thought, hey, if aliens ever find this thing, maybe we should leave some clues about how to find us. Carl Sagan, this big shot astrophysicist and his team put a bunch of cool stuff on these records, like sounds of Earth, music, greetings in different languages, and they even managed to encode some pictures into it. But here's the kicker. How would aliens even know what to do with this freaking disc? Like imagine just stumbling upon a weird disc, gold with symbols all over it, and having no clue how to play it or even what it is in the in the first place. Just pretty confusing. So basically we can't exactly use stuff like English or like numbers or anything relatively human in general to try and communicate with these aliens because they, their point of reference might be completely different from ours. So we had to work really hard to come up with universal symbols in order to essentially create a language that will allow the aliens to crack the code. So on this, so on the golden record is a diagram which is supposed to depict a hydrogen atom. Now, essentially what's going on in the diagram is that it's depicting the electron of the hydrogen atom flipping its spin. Now every element produces a certain wavelength when their electron flips their spin and it's unique to each element. So if aliens can figure that out, now have a number that they can use for reference for the entire thing. And so there's also that cool star looking map that's called a pulsar map. Essentially the ends of the lines are supposed to depict pulsar stars. So they're essentially cosmic lighthouses, these stars that spin around really fast thanks to their magnetic pulls and emit a beam of light. Each pulsar has its own unique frequency at the way it spins, and so using our hydrogen wavelength from earlier, aliens will be able to decipher which stars those are exactly, and thus be able to pinpoint where our planet is, which is all really convoluted and really cool. So cool, in fact, that I have it tattooed on my back. Anyways, these records also have some uranium stuff on their covers. Not not dangerous though. They're sort of they're meant to act as a clock telling aliens when exactly Exactly the records were sent out. So these records aren't just saying hi to aliens, they're also like a time capsule, which is pretty wild. But seriously, decoding messages to aliens is a whole other level of coolness. At number six is the Olympic broadcast. In 1974, humans shot a message to space from a massive telescope in Puerto Rico, but nobody actually heard it. We've been accidentally sending stuff like old TV shows into space for a while, which sounds pretty cool, but is kind of concerning. It might, it might give the wrong first impression if our alien neighbors catch our TV shows. Now some TV signals aren't 
nearly strong enough to escape our planet. While some are weak, while others are, might go a little bit stronger with their signal, but eventually they degrade over time. Even if they reached deep space, they'd be pretty quiet. Like dropping a pebble in the Pacific Ocean and expecting somebody in Japan to notice the ripple from California. So even if aliens picked up our stuff, they might not understand it as images or sound. They would just know it's tech made by somebody, but that's about it. Now in the Olympics, during the rain leading to World War II, um, the famous dictator with the mustache delivered a speech, and that broadcast was so loud and powerful, it might actually be the very first thing that aliens discover about us. Yeah, imagine if we met them like, hey, we got a message from you. Yeah, that was from our worst guy like ever. At number five is the interstellar broken telephone. Scientists recently sent a signal out to space aiming to chat with potential extraterrestrial pals. They even made a list of stars likely to get the message within the next hundred years. And guess what? They're hoping to hear back by 2029. These smart folks did some big math to figure out how far their messages will travel and when any replies might show up if they do. They shared their cool calculations in a science journal called Publications of the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. But the tricky part is that when we send these kind of radial signals out to space, they get weaker and harder to catch as they zoom along. So to make sure our messages have more oomph, scientists used NASA's super-powered deep space network. Some earlier attempts at this space chatting happened in the past, as back in 2002, we pinged a dead star about 27 light years away. And in the 80s, we messaged two stars expecting a reply by 2030. But not everybody thinks that this is a good idea. Some scientists worry that if aliens respond, we might not even notice. We only spread about one 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 millionth of the Milky Way with our signals. That's like trying to yell in a cosmic empty stadium. And number four is the beacon in the galaxy. We've been trying to talk to potential aliens for a while now. It's like sending a message in a bottle of space. The first attempt was in 1974 with the Arecibo message. Fast forward to now and scientists are still at it trying to figure out the best way to say hi to whoever might be out there. This new message called the beacon in the galaxy is like a crash course in everything that humans know. Math, chemistry, bio, you name it. But the tricky part is reminiscent of the golden record from earlier or how do you write a message that an alien can understand? Like, they, we can't use our languages or even numbers or symbols because let's face it, aliens aren't gonna know our ABCs or 123s. So we use a kind of code, like a computer language called binary. It's like all ones and zeros, kind of like how computers talk. But even some really smart people on Earth had trouble decoding this binary message. Imagine aliens trying to figure it out. They might not even know what binary is. These messages also have drawings and diagrams about us and our place in the universe. But aliens might not be able to even see things the way we do, so even if they do get our message, they might not understand what we're trying to show them. And number three is the Arecibo message. This message was humanity's very first big attempt to send a message to aliens. It's basically a letter hoping aliens would find it. This all went down in 74 when scientists sent a super strong signal into space from Puerto Rico. It was like a big hello to any possible aliens in a star cluster called M13, super far away from us, about two... 21,000 light years far. The message they sent was pretty simple. It had patterns and information about us, Earth, our solar system. But again, it was in binary made of ones and zeros. Now it's unlikely we will ever get a response to this message in particular, but hey, at least we tried. At number two is the wow signal. Wow. In 1977, a radio signal called the wow signal made scientists go, Wow! It was caught by a telescope at Ohio State University and lasted for 72 seconds. But after that, it disappeared, never to be heard again. The astronomer who discovered it was so amazed, he circled the signal on the data sheet and wrote WOW next to it, and hence its name. Now, the signal didn't come with a message or anything. It was just a strong burst of radio waves. Scientists have been trying to find its source for ages. One idea might be it comes from a star in the Sagittarius constellation, but experts say we can't jump to conclusions. And at number one is interspecies communication. What do whale experts and alien hunters have in common? A lot more than you'd think, actually. This group of, group of scientists got together and worked with their goal being to chat with whales. They did this experiment with a humpback whale named Twain. It wasn't like a full-on chat about life in the ocean, but it was still amazing. They used a special whale sound, kind of like a hello, to see if whales would reply. And then Twain showed up. For about 20 minutes, they kept making the sound, and Twain responded each time. Now, what's cool is that she even matched the gaps between their sounds. Like, if they waited 10 seconds, she waited two before replying. It's a real conversation. Why is this important? Well, scientists think if we can understand how animals talk to us, we might be able to figure out how aliens could communicate with us as well. Yeah. Imagine if whales taught us how to chat with extraterrestrials. It's pretty cool. Starting off at number 10, we have the theory that octopuses are aliens. <laughs> okay, I know that sounds hilarious, but okay, just hear this theory out. So, 
Ancient astronaut theorists believe that octopuses are some sort of version of an alien. So we all know that back in the day, tons of meteors crashed down on Earth. Well, they believe that the meteorites that crashed into the ocean from space actually contained some sort of organic material. Now, this either infected some sort of water species or allowed the material in the meteor to evolve into an octopus. So really, octopuses could be composed of alien DNA. Now, to support this theory, they mention that octopuses are actually quite gifted. In fact, they are known to play pranks on their human viewers. They also have different genomes than squids, which are said to be closely related to them. And they can change color. They're just a really weird species. So, what do you think? Could octopuses be a form of aliens? Moving on at number 9, we have the theory that ancient Egyptians were in contact with aliens. That's right. So there are two main points to this theory. One is that the pharaoh Akhenaten was actually an alien himself. So ancient Egypt was known to be polytheistic, meaning they believed in multiple gods. Then Akhenaten comes around and he declares that they worship only one god, the sun god. Now why would Akhenaten out of nowhere just declare this? Well, the answer may be in the carving of the sun god Aten. So Aten is depicted as a disc in the sky. What else do we know that is a disc that flies through the sky? UFOs and their spacecrafts. So they are convinced that he was in fact in contact with aliens who gave him the message that said that they should only be worshipping them. They also believe that Akhenaten may have been an extraterrestrial. So in all of his depictions he is seen with an elongated face and head, a long neck, small ribs and a protruding belly. While all the other pharaohs looked majestic and muscular. What is also weird about this is that he claimed that all of his carvings had to be accurate and representative of him. So that means that he truly looked like that. Meaning he looks an awful lot like an alien. Coincidence? I think not. In our 8th spot we have Osiris the robot. Okay, again this theory is a little more on the sillier side, but they do back it up with some solid evidence. So Osiris, for those of you who don't know, was an ancient Egyptian god. He was actually killed by his jealous brother Seth, who tore his body into 14 pieces. Now Osiris' wife ended up collecting all of those 14 body parts and she put them back together and resurrected him. Then after he was resurrected, he was depicted looking kind of like a pillar, which they claim looks like a modern day Tesla coil. So. Osiris looks like a machine and got perfectly pieced back together. This has led them to believe that he is indeed, sounds weird to say, but a robot. Sorry guys, uh, I don't agree with you on that one, but if it's true, then that's terrifying. At number 7, the Antarctic Pyramids. In 2016, rumors of pyramid-like mountains circulated the internet, capturing the imaginations of many. Could it be a creation of ancient civilizations, or perhaps... Cue the dramatic pause, evidence of ancient extraterrestrial intervention. This square based pyramid is perched upon the Ellsworth Range, standing around 4,000 feet tall. That's like 10 times the size of the pyramids of Giza. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, or should I say, tip of the pyramid. Reports of plant and bacterial life dating back eons also have come to light, suggesting that maybe, just maybe, a prehistoric, or should I say pre-human society once grazed this frigid expanse, crafting not only pyramids but also tending to the vegetation. BAM! Proof of ancient aliens. Or just a neat geological formation. I'll let y'all decide in the comments. At number 6, Admiral Byrd's Crystal City. Esteemed US Naval Officer Admiral Byrd, Admiral Richard Byrd was one of the first pilots to fly over both poles, Organizing Operation High Jump, the largest expedition to ever travel to Antarctica with all kinds of ships, aircraft, and crew in order to scout locations for potential military bases. But during his explorations, Admiral, Admiral Byrd allegedly came upon something highly unexpected. The following comes not from a public account, but from his own diary discovered by his son after Byrd's passing, in which he recounts an extraordinary discovery. Upon encountering a large cave in the South Pole through which he could easily fly his plane, Byrd steers his plane into the opening and flew underneath the earth. As he flies within the massive cave, he encroaches upon an incredibly 
relatively temperate and lush environment. Not something you'd expect in the South Pole, but that's just the beginning. He tells about how he sees a shimmering rainbow city made out of crystal. Suddenly he loses control of his plane as flying disc shaped objects lead him to the ground, whereupon he's escorted to a being which he refers to as the master in his diary, who tells Bird that it's massively disappointed with nuclear weapons and how they've recently destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, seeming to really be concerned with what's going on on the surface, telling Bird that these aliens hope humanity will ultimately stop this. At number 5. A UFO is discovered. In October of 2020, satellite images of Antarctica unveiled a peculiar sight. Amidst the icy expanse, an object resembling a semi-circular flying saucer emerged, slightly elevated and casting a telltale shadow. Believed by some to be an ancient aircraft dating back thousands if not millions of years. The notion of aliens opting for this secluded spot brims with intrigue. However, however, before we leap into intergalactic conclusions, it's essential that we exercise caution. While this image sparks conjecture, we all we do lack conclusive evidence about its origin or purpose. At number 4 is the alien base. If this next story is to be believed, there is allegedly a secret alien base with advanced and unconventional weapons hidden in the icy waters of the Antarctic. According to a video uploaded by UFO hunters, a mysterious anomaly about 180 kilometers off the coast of Antarctica has been spotted. They speculate that it's not just some kind of hangar or a, for a spaceship, but that actual aliens might be residing there too. Now this may veer toward the conspiracy side rather than urban legend, but hey, it's all in good fun. Some believers are advocating for an expedition to confirm the existence of these aliens, while others voice concerns about potentially sparking an intergalactic war if we're not careful. So whatever it is, let's just hope we tread carefully. At number 3, the Kraken. The Kraken is a legendary maritime menace straight from the annals of Scandinavian folklore, a colossal cephalopod-like creature feared for its ship-swallowing antics and sailor-dragging tendencies. But could this creature of nautical nightmares actually be an alien? Yeah, you heard me right. A Reddit user named Bavin Hunter has set their investigative sights on Google Earth, claiming that they spot what appears to be a Kraken near Deception Island in Antarctica. Quite the ironic location, I must say. They suggest that this dark spot lurking in the depths might just be this mystical monster. Granted, we've got some real life cephalopods that can stir the imagination, but they're not exactly Kraken sized. Or maybe it's a cryptic alien being lurking beneath the icy depths. At number 2, Alien DNA. Traces of potential alien DNA were discovered in the Antarctic, a mind-boggling revelation that recently shook the scientific community regarding DNA traces found beyond the depths of certain Antarctic caverns. Algae DNA intertwined with fragments from minute creatures paints a picture of potential alien origin. Though no immediate creatures were unearthed, this discovery opens portals to speculation. Could Antarctica, once deemed a barren expanse, have teemed with diverse life forms? For a life here are akin to an extraterrestrial habitat, hinting at hidden chambers harboring unexpected life. Warmth emanating from beneath the icy veneer adds to the intrigue, making it plausible for life to have happened to have gained a foothold here. At number one is the crashed UFO on Google Maps. In the realm of mysterious Antarctic enigmas, 2019 incident lit the extraterrestrial fuse. Enter Scott C. Waring, a fevering UFO, a fevering UFO enthusiast who, armed with Google Maps, embarked on a digital Antarctic odyssey. His pixelated gaze locked onto a triangular UFO ensnared within the icy clutches. With the distinctive hump and formidable edges, this alien ridge, should the thought unshackle this craft, could we witness an eerie revival of extraterrestrial occupants? This UFO trapped in an icy stasis awaits a tangible inquiry query, as its revelation could potentially reshape our cosmic worldview. So as we peel back the layers of ice and venture deeper into Antarctic's hidden past, we're left with a trove of unsolved puzzles. Are these clues pointing to the extraterrestrial visitors, or are they simply the product of natural phenomena that we've yet to fully comprehend? The allure of the unknown keeps, the, keeps us asking questions, keeps us searching for that flicker of insight that might illuminate the truth. And whether you find yourself firmly grounded in skepticism or ready to embrace the possibility of otherworldly contact, one thing is for sure, the Antarctic holds its secrets close. At number 10, the Anita Experiment, the scientific discovery that proves the existence of parallel universes. Now, okay, this one isn't technically aliens per se, but I wanted to mention it first because not only is it real, but come on, what's more exciting, extraterrestrial visitors or extra-dimensional ones? Huh? Huh? 
Imagine a remote research station in Antarctica where scientists diligently hunt for cosmic rays. Now that's intriguing on its own, but it gets even better. See, naturally they had their instruments facing the sky, but then these researchers suddenly detect not one, but two signals shooting out of the ground beneath them, defying all logic. See, these rays of neutrinos are supposed to come from supernova, so it's highly improbable that the rays are passing through the Earth without coming into contact with a single particle of matter, only to land on a tiny weather balloon in the sky. To make sense of this, scientists dived into over 40 papers offering a buffet of explanations. Dark matter, elusive particles called sterile neutrinos, neutrinos, and then, the grandest of them all, a parallel universe, essentially a mirror image of ours, but where time runs backwards. Imagine that! This audacious idea isn't pulled out of thin air either, it's rooted in actual science, a theorem which hints that alongside our universe, an antimatter universe stretches backward through time before the Big Bang. But let's tap the brakes here, because a more down-to-earth theory has surfaced. That's right, hold your antimatter horses, because it turns out it's more likely that these signals were simply reflected off of ice or skipped off subglacial lakes. The truth, it seems, is more grounded, reflecting high energy particles, not parallel dimensions. Sorry, y'all. I mean, unless you want to go ahead and put away Occam's razor. But before I do, if you're enjoying the video so far, you can support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Most Amazing, and ringing that notification bell. At number 9, Alien Fossils. Back in 1996, NASA dropped a bombshell. Well, not literally. They stumbled upon a meteorite from Mars right there on our very own Antarctica. This space wanderer, a potato-shaped piece of Martian real estate, harbored something truly astonishing, a fossilized microbe. That's like finding a cosmic postcard in your backyard. This meteorite most likely embarked on a 15 million year journey across our solar, si across our solar neighborhood before cozying up on Earth. Now, let's dig deeper. The rock didn't just bring this Martian visitor, it also packed organic molecules, but before we declare aliens, bear in mind that there are on that this is an ongoing debate in the scientific arena. Some argue that this is a smoking pew pew of extraterrestrial existence, while skeptics keep their feet firmly on Earth. What's your take on this otherworldly puzzle? At number 8 is the frozen ancient civilization. Enter Cory Goode, a name synonymous with the clandestine narrative that spirals deep beneath the Antarctic ice. The year was 2017 when Goode's voice resonated through the annals of conspiratorial discourse, asserting that a buried treasure lay beneath two miles of frigid ice, an ancient alien civilization, frozen in time. But let's rewind to 1939, a German expedition that allegedly stumbled upon this enigma. Fast forward to 2002, and the site begrudged opened its icy gate to scientists and archaeologists. What's captivating is Goad's own voyage, facilitated by the US Air Force, to witness the fabled civilization. A civilization that was purport that was rumored to be standing 55,000 years in Earth's past. This story leaves us yearning for forthcoming years to yield more insights into these Antarctic enigmas. Well, this video from one of our viewers, Mash Hatai. He said he woke up at about 2.30 this morning, get a drink of water, and this is what he saw in the sky. Certainly caught his eye. He took the video from Kaka'ako and thinks the lights were over central or west Oahu, hard to tell from his vantage point. As you can see, the two bright lights and then slowly a third light appears. Hatai believes he saw about eight to ten of the lights total. What the hell? Guys, aliens might be real and I, it's scary to say that out loud. How else do you explain this? Like, also let me know in the comments below if you've ever had a creepy alien encounter because now I want to know. Let me know in the comments below. Something is in the sky. What is that? This video was taken by Misitina Sape at 8.26 Tuesday night near Haleakala Avenue in Nanokuli. Not long after, a woman named Mariah spotted the same thing passing over Princess Kahanu Estates. I don't know what it looked at. And then I was like, oh, sh**. I started calling my husband then because it was all in the garage. I was like, hey, look at that. Let's see what I see. The 38-year-old says she's never really been a believer in UFOs, but the bright blue object had them so intrigued, they jumped in the car and started following it. I don't know what it was. This one was going so fast. The journey ended less than three miles from where it began, on Farrington Highway in front of the Board of Water Supply building, after the object appeared to drop into the ocean. Oh my God, do the aliens live in the ocean? Like, was it just returning home? Maybe that's why we haven't found them, because they store their spacecraft underwater, in the depths, in Mariana's Trench. Love that band. But like, in the depths, down there, that's where the aliens are hiding, where we can't go. Wow. 
maybe that's where they are. Also, they are brave for following this. They're like, yeah, let's just get in the car and follow this potential UFO that could kill us. Yeah, let's just do it. Typical Tuesday. Now it is darkened outside. Temperatures are sitting at 61 in Buffalo. We have a northerly wind at 7. Good sleeping weather tonight, folks. Uh, you, what was that? Did anybody see that thing go past? Did we just see a shooting star? Good sleeping weather tonight, folks. Uh, you, what eh. was that? Did anybody see that thing? Eh. Nothing impressive compared to the other ones. That was probably just a shooting star. This guy was just trying to hype it up. He's like, how can I make the news more interesting? Whoa, did everyone see that? No, that wasn't a piece of my danger flying by the screen. It was actually UFO. So, I'm famous now. I caught it on camera. <laughs> the Pentagon has confirmed a strange and unexpected sight captured by Navy personnel off the coast of California. The video shows flying pyramid shaped objects hovering above the USS Russell and another warship. It was leaked by filmmaker Jeremy Corbell. Uh, he's also shared three images from the USS Omaha showing an unknown spherical craft. The spherical Pentagon craft. has Why did confirmed he say it like its that? unidentified <laughs> aerial phenomena task force, what a task force that is, is examining the footage. That guy got really into the story. I think he believes in aliens. He's like, spherical, spherical crafts, yeah, aliens. That's literally what he sounded like. The Pentagon revealed that like it was a UFO, but UFO is technically unidentified flying objects. So it doesn't mean that it's an ET, it just means that they don't know what the hell it was, <laughs> which makes me feel better. So maybe, maybe it's not aliens, maybe it's just like a drone, I don't know. I'm scared. <laughs> Navy pilots say they saw something that defies the limits of known aviation technology. They've been popping up around our national security facilities and baffling veteran military personnel. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. And civilians, including commercial airline pilots, are also seeing it. We just had something go right over the top of us. Here's a rendering of what an American Airlines pilot reported. I hate to say this looked like a long cylindrical object. It almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast that went right over the top. Okay, that scares me for a number of reasons. Number one, they said that there was a whole bunch of them flying in the sky. Hello, are aliens trying to invade Earth now? Like, why can't we just live side by side in peace? Like, what happened to we come in peace? Like, come on, be a good alien. Number two, what if it's like another country spy, like I read about this, it could be another country spying on us through these craft type things. I don't know, either way it's spooky and, and I'm scared. <laughs> An unidentified aerial phenomenon dropped down on the Florida coast. First thing in the morning we drove to the beach to find it. This is what we saw when we got there. We tried to get closer but the officers on the beach saw us. When we got home this man was at our house. For days we have seen suspicious vehicles in front of our place. If anyone knows what we should do, please let us know. You need to move, that's what you should do. A UFO literally crashed down on the beach by your house. That's time to pack up and leave, okay? And literally they're describing like the men in black coming there and like... Oh, so you see any, uh, anything suspicious lately? Any uh, ETs, UFOs, let me know. That is scary, seriously. Pack up and get the heck out of there. Again, the, wait, hold up. I think I just put two and two together. I think I just solved this whole alien thing. Again, it crashed down by water. What if this UFO was trying to enter the water? Like I said before, aliens actually live deep down below in the ocean. Again, this kind of proves it, so just saying. Just saying. Starting off this countdown, we have Mark Zuckerberg. Rumor has it that Mark Zuckerberg is an alien or a lizard person. Let me explain. In a number of interviews, people notice that Mark Zuckerberg barely blinks. It's true. I've seen videos and this dude must have like some watery eyes or something cause he blinked like once every minute. He just sat there with his eyes wide open looking like an alien. Then people went on to say that he wears contact lenses to hide his yellow lizard pupils. Maybe that's why he's so smart, because he's an alien. Either that or he's a robot or something. His weird mannerisms has everyone spooked. Conspiracy theorists are adamant that he's going to take over the world and destroy democracy. It's crazy. Coming in at number nine, we have Jeffrey Bezos. I'm sensing a theme here, okay? People like to think that rich, powerful men are aliens. 
Jeffrey Bezos, CEO, entrepreneur, born in 1964, is another individual that might be an alien. Also, that was a reference to Bo Burnham, I love him. His song, Jeffrey Bezos, go check it out. Not only is he very intelligent, but people have been studying his mannerisms and think there's something wrong with him. Take a look at this. <laughs> But that was actually not supposed to be a bad pun. And then disclosure, um, you are. <laughs> is it just me, or is his laugh undeniably creepy? He keeps his eyes wide open and locked on his target while laughing. Also, it seems forced. Maybe aliens don't have any emotions, so he has to force himself to laugh at jokes so he seems normal. I don't even know what to think anymore. Also, side note, someone deep faked Jeffrey into a Star Trek episode, and let's just say I'm now scarred for life. Is this a deception? Do you intend to destroy yourselves? Moving on to number eight, we have Alien Barbie. Ukrainian woman Valeria Lukanova is known as the human Barbie doll. She's got an impossible tiny waist, wide doll-like eyes, and a big bust. In fact, to achieve this look, she had some of her ribs removed. But not only is she a real life Barbie doll, but she also claims that she's a time traveling alien. Yes, you heard me correctly. This woman claims that she's not human. She said that she's an alien that has come to Earth to save the world. A little late for that. Uh, but what is she saving us from, you ask? Well, uh, she says negative energy. Okay. And uh, she has a goal to transform humans into demigods. I mean, that's cool. I want to be a demigod, so sign me up for that. She also has claimed to be a breatharian. She says that she lives off of nothing but light and air. So maybe she really is an alien because it's physically impossible to live off of just light and air. Like you need food and water. Coming in at number seven, we have the geoglyphs. So geoglyphs are large drawings or symbols that people create on the ground and can only be seen fully from up above. Now, ancient astronaut theorists tried to figure out why citizens would do this. I mean, they aren't easy to create, they are quite time consuming. So why would people spend hours making these with no incentive? Well, they theorize that they are using these to get in contact with extraterrestrials. When analyzing these geoglyphs, they found repeated symbols used worldwide. They use a lot of symbols like spirals or even a star sun cross geoglyph. That particular geoglyph is seen in mandalas in Tibet and India. This glyph is also so complicated, yet other people are making it, making it seem like a universal language that was once used to contact aliens. Moving on to number six, we have the Van Allen radiation belt. So the Van Allen belt surrounds Earth and basically acts as a protective force to block out any radiation from coming into Earth from charged space particles. Without this belt, then any space item that enters Earth could expose us to deadly radiation. So these theorists believe that the Van Allen belt was made by aliens to protect them from other aliens during an extraterrestrial war. They even say that the belt can change and mutate, almost as if it's being directed by a creature of higher intelligence. So this belt does not only protect us from radiation, but also against attacks from hostile aliens. Throughout time, there has been reported UFO crashes onto Earth. But how could aliens be that high tech and not be able to control their spacecraft? Well, that's because the belt was specifically designed to keep them out. So basically, Earth is at the center of an extraterrestrial conflict and some of the aliens are protecting us. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the resurrected mummies. Mummies can be resurrected, you heard me correctly. Bodies of deceased Egyptian pharaohs and other individuals can potentially be resurrected. Okay, I can tell you several reasons why this would be a bad idea, like don't they watch the movies? So the way that Egyptians have embalmed bodies has preserved them and allowed them to survive for thousands of years. These theorists believe that if they find a complete set of blueprints for an ancient Egyptian body, then they could potentially regenerate their DNA. They also believe that the ancient Egyptians were aware of this. The extraterrestrials told them of this process and that's why they had these specific preservation techniques. They believe once they figure out how to resurrect individuals, then they will be able to move between the living world and the world of the afterlife where they they will be able to encounter 
aliens. So basically, once we harness this capability, it will unlock all the answers we need surrounding aliens. In our fourth spot, we have humans are the aliens' test subjects. So this theory began when ancient astronaut theorists realized that most of the alien abduction stories were identical. In fact, more than 60% of the abductees had the same rare blood type, RH negative. They believe that this played a factor in their abduction. So if you had this blood type, good luck. You may be abducted by aliens. So they believe that for years, ETs have been meddling with human DNA. In fact, they point out how we evolved from Homo sapiens to Homo sapiens sapiens in a short time frame. They also think that ETs had something to do with this. And now ETs are still trying to mess with our DNA when abducting people. They are trying to take us to a more extreme form. Uh, no thanks. And now I need to figure out what kind of blood type I am. For number three, we have Earth is a big test lab. Yes, theorists believe that Earth was just a big laboratory for the ETs to conduct experiments on. This includes forming hybrid creatures. Now, hybrid creatures are seen all throughout mythology. In ancient Greek mythology, you have Cerberus, the three-headed dog, or the centaur, half horse, half man. In Hindu mythology, you have Naja, half cobra, and half human. There are many more examples of mentioned hybrid creatures. So you can either believe that these are just stories, or maybe our ancestors actually saw these creatures. But then they also theorized that the ETs were responsible for the Great Flood. They wanted to wipe out these hybrid animals and start again. Now aliens are still conducting experiments today, but this time focusing mainly on humans. In our second spot, we have the ET's DNA. So this theory surrounds the idea that humans contain a shared gene with aliens. They go on to prove this by highlighting cases of people born with strange features. Like how there are over a hundred reported cases of people being born with tails. Or people that have ichthyosis. They were born with dry, scaly skin. Or even syndactyly and ectrodactyly, which is people born with fused fingers and claw type hands. So they believe that humans once commingled with reptilian type aliens. As a result, we carry their genetic makeup. These circumstances could be an instance where this shared gene has tried to resurface. In fact, our genes are made up of so much stuff that we still don't understand. So it may just be possible that we have the slightest bit of alien in us. And in our number one spot, we have John F. Kennedy. So this show theorizes that John F. Kennedy, the 35th president of the United States, was assassinated because he was going to expose the truth about aliens. Okay, this hasn't been the first president who have claimed that the government has been hiding alien secrets. Just like how apparently Richard Nixon hid a time capsule in the White House that contains proof of extraterrestrials. So for this theory, someone found a half burned document in a fireplace. It was supposed to be completely destroyed, but they pulled it out and saved it. Now this document read, you must know Lancer has made some inquiries about our activities which we cannot allow. Lancer was the president's secret service name. It basically said that if he kept doing what he was doing, then it should be wet. Wet was code for assassinated because wet was often associated with blood. But that's not all. So there was a man named E. Howard Hunt who was an officer of the CIA when Kennedy was president. One of Hunt's close friends ended up asking him why he thought Kennedy was assassinated. He said, because he was about to give our most vital secret to the Soviet Union. When he pried further, Hunt said, alien presence. So there you have it folks, the government knows about extraterrestrials and is going to extreme lengths to keep it from the public. They even went as far as to kill their own president. Starting us off at number 10 is the Madonna with Saint John. Dating back to the 15th century, this iconic painting is arguably one of the most debated depictions of alien life on earth. Likely painted by Domenico Galileo. I mean there is debate there too, but that's another story. However, as you can see, it depicts the Madonna with baby Jesus and Saint John. However, if you zoom in to the top right corner, you'll notice something very strange. There is an unnamed man shielded his eyes from what looks like a bright light in the sky, and beside him is a dog staring up at the same shining object. The object appears to be strangely similar to most modern depictions of a UFO, painted as a dark oval with light rays shooting out from every angle, and has definitely been the subject of much debate among alien believers and non-believers for decades. Now, it wasn't unusual for the time to paint angels or other celestial beings brightly shining down on us from the sky, but 
as this specific painting appears to have no such addition to the light and is simply a strangely specific flying saucer, it has led many to believe that the painter was depicting a real life alien sighting. And truth be told, it wasn't the first time such things showed up in artwork, and it is also not the last. Could it really be a UFO? I don't know, you tell me. Coming in at number 9, coins. During a house renovation in Egypt, a group of workers say that they found two coins that had very unusual portraits on them. The first they found resembles the head and shoulders of an alien, while the other looks more like it depicts an alien spaceship landing, and they immediately freaked out. Plus, one of them apparently had the words opportunus adest carved on the back, which is Latin for there is an opportunity, which definitely comes across a little spooky. I won't lie, there's a lot of debate around the validity of these coins. As many have pointed out, the coins could have easily been manipulated by believers, but it has been countered by the fact that either way, there's no actual concrete proof that they don't come from aliens. I mean, I have some questions. Would aliens even use currency like us, let alone physical currency? I honestly have no clue, but I mean if I came across these coins, I too might be just as suspicious about their origin. Coming in at number 8, the Second Punic War Sightings. During the Second Punic War, which occurred in ancient Rome between 218 and 201 BC, there were apparently many sightings of strange sky phenomenon that today, believers claim were aliens coming down to Earth. These alleged sightings were found in the Annals Maximi, which is essentially a historical record kept by the chief high priest during the Roman Republic, and in it is the tale of a day in 218 BC where ships that apparently gleamed in the sky came out of clouds and stayed floating in the sky. And I mean, I don't blame anyone for jumping to an alien conclusion on that one. Then two years later in 216 BC, a similar sighting was documented where large gleaming round shields allegedly traveled through the air. Conspiracy theorists have clung onto these writings, pointing out how both descriptions can easily be imagined as the common UFO described in our modern era. Plus, this war was not the only one in history to claim such things happening in the sky. I mean, just like everything else on this list, will we ever know if the writings in the historical record really were an alien sighting? Probably not, unless we can figure out a time traveling situation, but it is a little suspicious, I would say. Coming in at number 7, we have Grimes. Grimes might just be an alien, and so might be her partner, Elon Musk, but more on him later. But how cute! Two aliens came from space and connected on Earth. That's what I call destiny and true love. Anyways, if you follow her, then you know she's quite the character. And just recently, she got alien scars on her back, or at least that's what she calls them. They're just a bunch of light colored lines that she got tattooed on her back. But maybe aliens actually have tattoos or designs like that on their backs and she knows something that we don't know. I mean there's a huge conspiracy out there that Grimes is an alien. Just search on reddit and you'll find a number of people who believe this theory. Moving on at number 6 we have Poppy. Hi it's me Poppy. Poppy is an American singer, songwriter, musician, and YouTuber. She is known for her very unusual videos where she talks in a very soft and high pitched voice. Is this just her persona or stage act, or is she an alien? Now, there's so many different theories surrounding her from being part of the Illuminati, to being created by the government, to being a hologram, to even being a robot. I'm telling you, there's tons of theories out there. But a more popular one is that she's an alien from space. Most of this is based off of her mannerisms in her videos and uh, the fact that we hardly know anything about her true self. One video that really started this theory was one where she reacts to a Fine Bros video. In this video, she cited every single word that was shown from her older videos. And she did this without showing any emotions, and without even acknowledging the kids that were reacting to her. It's very weird to say the least. Hi, I'm Poppy. You're freaking me out. I wanted to see you. What the heck? Thanks for coming down here with me. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Steve Buscemi. And I just want to start off by saying that he's an amazing actor. Like, totally underrated, and I'm so happy talking about him because, uh, also fun fact, we share the same birthday, so I just feel this connection to him. So Steve, if you're watching, this, I want to be your friend. Anyways, people often judge Steve based off of his looks. 
I mean, I think he was on the list of like ugliest people in Hollywood or something like that, which like that is mean. How did they get away with that? That's super hurtful. Lists like that just shouldn't exist, okay? But anyways, due to his unique appearance, people think that Steve is out of this world. They think that he's an alien or a cryptoid or something like that. There's even a bunch of memes out there making fun of Steve saying that he's an alien. I personally don't think he's one. Like, if we're judging based off looks, that's just mean. He's a great guy. But I still put him on this list for all you people out there that think that he could be one. Watch him actually be an alien, I'm like defending him. <laughs> In our fourth spot, we have Tilda Swinton, who, might I add, is another incredible actor. Tilda's range is unbelievable. She is unrecognizable in some roles. Like, she goes from playing the White Witch in the Chronicles of Narnia, to the Ancient One in Doctor Strange, to Thora Thacker in Hail Caesar. She's just so versatile. And that's why some people think that she's an alien, because the ease in which she can transform her appearance and look like a completely different person. Or the ease in which she can change her personality and behave like a completely different person. I mean, I just call that good acting, but then other people are like, aliens! Also, people think that she's an alien because she has a unique appearance. Again, let's not judge a book by its cover here. It seems like the people trying to behave normally are the ones we should be concerned about, okay? In our third spot, we have Bill Gates. I wish I had the amount of wealth that Bill Gates had, and now he's single, so Bill, hit me up. Just kidding, you're too old for me. Anyways, according to some people, Bill is an alien. How come aliens always have to be the richest people? Like seriously, you got Mark, you got Jeffrey Bezos, and now Bill. How come all the alien dudes are rich? Anyways, the main reason why people think that he's an alien is due to his advanced knowledge on computers and technology. So aliens are supposed to be highly advanced creatures. They created highly advanced spacecrafts to travel throughout space and to Earth. Maybe Bill was sent from space to help advance human life. And then he liked it so much here that he decided to stick around. Or maybe he got too famous and was like, oh crap, I can't just disappear from the public eye. They're gonna wonder where I went. And now he's kind of stuck on Earth against his will. Moving on to number two, we have Stephen Colbert. Honestly, he's the last person I would think to be an alien. But that's a good thing, right? It means that he's being stealthy about it. It's always the people you least expect. So a woman named Liz Brown came up with proof as to why she believes Steven is an alien. Her first point is his intelligence. She said, and I quote, a recent report showed that viewers of the Colbert Report are more well informed about political and social issues than viewers of legitimate news programs on ABC or CNN. Most alien experts agree that our interplanetary friends have a level of intelligence far beyond human capabilities. Of course, this could also mean that regular Colbert Report viewers are being groomed for abduction. End of quote. Imagine that, Steven using his show to gain fans and then abduct them and use them in tests run by aliens. The next point she made is his immunity from diseases. She said that she has never seen him get sick. She said, and I quote, what kind of regular human beings can consume Bud Light Lime on a regular basis on air and still not get sick? End quote. She's kind of got a point there. She then also went on to talk about Steven's love for space. In 2009, he made a public campaign telling his viewers to vote for the new treadmill on the International Space Station to be named after him. Why did he want this so badly? Well, it could be that this was a way to send a message to his alien friends out there telling them, like, we did it. I'm in control of the humans. This is proof. Crazy, isn't it? Makes you really think. And in our number one spot today, we have Elon Musk. Why does Elon Musk want to go to Mars so bad? Honestly, he just wants to return to his home planet. He has announced a number of times that he wants to retire and die on Mars. He probably hates it here on Earth and is dying to get back. Let's look at more evidence. This dude invented the Tesla, like he's super intelligent. First off, he got into the electrical vehicle business, which only represents 0.1% of all cars sold. Looking at that, it would seem like a bad thing to get into. But nonetheless, he did and he succeeded. Why? Because he's got alien capabilities to not only see into the future, but also create high-tech things, like Teslas. 
Someone else added that his end goal is to save Earth. He's seen into the future and how bad global warming gets. So he's trying to reduce global emissions through his carbs. Maybe make them cheaper then. Not only that, but on a number of occasions he has tweeted out some suspicious things. Someone tweeted at him asking if he was an alien, and he said, obviously. So he just admitted it, okay? I know he's just joking, but still. Another time he tweeted saying, aliens built the pyramids. I mean, he was probably one of the aliens there building them alongside the Egyptians. In the end, everything he is doing on Earth is to save us and then, you know, help himself get back to his home planet. At number 10 is the alien in custody. So this former Air Force intelligence officer spilled the beans at a congressional hearing about how the US government has been keeping a lid on some of this wild alien stuff. Apparently, there's a lot more to UFOs than just rumors. At this congressional hearing, there were these three folks, David Grush, David Fravor, and Ryan Graves, all of whom used to work in the military. Fravor and Graves claimed that they saw these weird flying objects multiple times, like almost as if it was some kind of normal routine for them. And then there's Commander Ryan Grush, who didn't see any himself, but he talked about this top secret government program supposedly dealing with alien tech dating way back. Like, we're talking about stuff recovered from the 1930s, but however, the Pentagon's all, nope, nada, never happened. The hearing made it clear that even Congress themselves are being left out of the loop. Some senators want a review board to release all classified UFO records. It's pretty intense, especially since people are thinking that this could be all a big deal for national security. Graves said it right himself, we deserve to know what's happening in our skies. And number nine is the interstellar base on Mars. Are we already in touch with aliens? A former head of Israel's space program is suggesting that humans have been mingling with aliens for years. Hayim Ashed, a reputable figure with a long track record in space endeavors, dropped a bombshell about secretive interactions between the US and extraterrestrial beings. This 87-year-old Israeli insider spilled the bean on deals struck between the USA and aliens. Supposedly, they're teaming up to dig into the mysteries of the universe. He even went on to say that that Elon Musk's whole life mission of colonizing Mars is all kind of for nothing because according to him, uh, we've already done it. Yeah, apparently we already have a secret base hidden underground on Mars where Americans and aliens are working side by side. Pretty wild to think about the implications if this is true. Imagine humans rubbing shoulders with creatures beyond our planet, like not even in a Hollywood movie, but in real life. What would they look like? How do they communicate? What amazing things could we learn from them? It's like diving into a science fiction story except according to Hashed, this is our reality. If you're enjoying this video so far, you can support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Most Amazing, and ringing that notification bell. At number eight are the eight interstellar messages. Eight mysterious signals from outer space recently caught the attention of scientists. These signals might be from aliens. Scientists published their findings in a fancy science journal called Nature Astronomy. Now, why are these signals such a big deal? Well, scientists always keep an eye out for signals from outer space because they might be aliens trying and talk to us. These signals could show that there's someone out there using technology to try and communicate with us. But hold up, how do we know that these signals are from aliens? It's a good question. You see, these alien signals are different from regular human signals or just pulsars, for example. Humans use wide range signals for things like phones and Wi-Fi, but these alien signals, they're narrow and way different. That's what makes them special possibly from alien technology. Now, how did scientists discover these signals? Well, they used a clever AI program with a cool telescope. This AI checked 812 star systems from data collected by a satellite called Hippocros. And guess what? It found eight signals that seemed promising that could possibly be from aliens. However, when scientists looked again, the signals were gone all of a sudden. Why? Nobody knows for sure. Maybe the aliens are being shy or just not that into chatting with us. But hey, it's still exciting because this means that there's somebody out there trying to reach us just from far, far away. Coming in at number seven, Egyptian hieroglyphs. There's a lot of debate around alien involvement in ancient Egypt. And aside from the eternal debate of if aliens help 
helped build the pyramids, hieroglyphs depict just about the most suspicious signs of extraterrestrial help. Now I'll be the first to say that I don't think all hieroglyphs point towards ancient alien invasion, but that doesn't mean that there aren't a few that raise an eyebrow. One in particular is a hieroglyph appearing to show the Egyptians in possession of electricity, which if that were true, feels like a surefire sign that they were not alone down here. The tableau depicts what appears to be people holding an electric lamp or maybe a light bulb, and believers have not wasted any time adding this to their Rolodex of reasons. And it's not just electricity that ancient Egyptians may have possessed, but other hieroglyphs seem to portray other forms of advanced technology that, in theory, they would have no way of knowing about. Hieroglyphs with a spooky resemblance to helicopters or planes have been found and gone viral, only adding to the mystery of how on earth this could have been something they would possibly know about. Could it be that aliens came down and gave them knowledge to advance their technology? Could the alleged airplane drawings be a UFO they saw in the sky? Conspiracy theorists say absolutely. Coming in at number 6, Dogu. Not every sign of alien life has to do with a UFO sighting. Sometimes the signs are a bit more subtle. Dating back roughly to between the years of 14,000 and 400 BC, ancient Japan was known for crafting small human-like statues out of clay called Dogu. These statues usually measure between 4 to 12 inches, and while the exact reason for their construction remains under speculation, there are two main theories. The first is that Dogu were created as part of an ancient healing and fertility ritual, which could very well be true. However, the second one is a little more intriguing as it involves aliens. Now, if you take a look at these statues, they don't just look like a normal human statue. They have a strange, bulbous sort of look to them with large beanie baby eyes and kind of appear to be wearing what some have described as a stylized spacesuit. That, along with the helmeted head, has created a ton of speculation around if they were in fact modeled after aliens who visited ancient Japan and made contact with its inhabitants. I suppose we might never know for sure, but it's definitely an interesting theory. Coming in at number 5, One Gina. For a long time, a lot of indigenous culture was passed down orally through stories. One of these such stories from Australian Aboriginal mythology talks about spirits named the One Gina, and as they tell it, the One Gina came down from the sky and created the earth as well as all of its inhabitants. Then, when the spirit found the place they would die, they painted their image on cave walls and entered a nearby watering hole. These paintings were then refreshed by indigenous people as a method of generating their life force. But what is intriguing about this tale in particular is that these spirits are depicted all over in the form of ancient rock paintings and appear to date back about 4,000 years. Plus, around the heads of the Wangina are lines or blocks of color seemingly depicting lightning coming out of their helmets, which I mean is definitely a little suspicious. And many believers have been quick to point out the acute resemblance to the description of greys given by alleged alien abductees. If you don't know, greys are pretty much the classic depiction of an alien and are thought to be one of the extraterrestrial races, with UFOologists claiming they make up about 40% of reported abductions and sightings in the US. But could greys have come down, created life on Earth, and then disappeared into the night? I mean, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Coming in at number 4, a flaming shield. Similarly to the Roman historical report, other cultures too recorded significant happenings, and the Annales Lorisesnes Maiores, which recorded much of history between 680 AD and 829 AD in what is now modern day Germany, is definitely filled with some mysterious and interesting stories. One tale in particular took place during the time where battalions of Saxon soldiers were attacking, and it details as the attack progressed, suddenly a bizarre object appeared in the skies overhead. The potential UFO was described as the likeness of two large flaming shields, reddish in color and appearing as though it was floating in the skies above them. Apparently the object was so frightening that the advancing Saxon army abandoned the fight and retreated back to safety, something that would have been incredibly unusual for them. Now, the only hole to poke in this is that the author is a known, but 
but it is widely accepted that writers of the time would record events as they happened and that these stories would be compiled at a later date into the finished work. So just because we don't know who wrote it doesn't mean we don't know for sure it didn't happen. Coming in at number 3, Lizard People. One of the wildest conspiracies out there is the belief that there is a race of half human, half lizard people that are taking over the world. Now, I will admit, this one is a little trickier for me to get behind for several reasons. However, after finding out about this piece of the puzzle, I am definitely a little curious. Although the conspiracy wasn't popularized until the 1990s, in the beginning of the 20th century, archaeologist Harry Reginald Hal made an unsettling discovery that definitely brought up a lot of questions. The archaeological site in question is referred to as Tal al Ubaid and has served as a gold mine for ancient artifacts. However, by far, the strangest uncovered artifacts have to be the multiple series of lizard humanoid statues found by Harry in 1919. From what archaeologists can deduce, they don't appear to represent gods as they aren't depicted in ceremonious poses, and so it has led many to believe they could be early depictions of the race of lizard people. I mean, I won't lie, these little statues are super creepy and maybe one of the only times the lizard people theory has got me feeling a little suspicious. I don't know, do you think these figurines really could be proof of the evil lizard race invading the planet? Coming in at number 2, an alien mummy? Mummies are everywhere in Egypt, so while they are definitely interesting, they rarely cause any kind of huge excitement in the archaeological community, unless it's a particularly special one. Well, as I'm sure you've put together at this point, a few years ago, Dr. Victor Lubeck, who was a retired professor from the University of Pennsylvania, uncovered a strange mummy that made him question what he was seeing. Discovered in a small pyramid, Pyramid near Senrusat II's pyramid was the mummy of a small, unidentified creature with seemingly no resemblance to that of a human body or known animal. To make things even more strange, buried along with the humanoid mummy were unusual objects Victor was unable to identify. What was clear was that whatever this was, was mummified with great respect and care. And an inscription was found on the tomb that roughly translates to star or sent from heaven. The running conspiracy theory is that it was an alien who was involved in some way with advising the pharaoh Senruset II, which would explain his royal treatment and careful mummification. I mean, it's definitely unsettling and absolutely an unusual find. But is it an alien? I mean, I guess it could be. And last up today in our number one, spot, the Sumerian civilization. The ancient Sumerians were a group of people that suddenly became established in Mesopotamia circa 2900 BCE. No one is quite sure where they came from originally, but there is a general conspiracy that is well documented that their origins were not from planet Earth. According to a series of ancient texts, the Sumerians were created by an alien race called the Anunnaki, who came to Earth after their planet Nibiru collided with another planet in the solar Solar system. The aliens found themselves in a short supply of gold and saw that Earth was in high supply. So they landed here and supposedly created a new species that was half alien, half human to mine the gold for them. Now, it does sound a little crazy, but the Sumerians did have advanced scientific, agricultural, and technological knowledge, as well as an acute understanding of the solar system, which was highly advanced at their time. Researchers have recorded clay pot batteries that still contained electrodes, a flyable model airplane, as well as an unexplainable capability to cut large stones with exact precision. Not to mention, similarly to the Egyptians, Sumerians seemed familiar and depicted drawings of rockets airplanes and helicopters on certain artifacts from their time too. And if that didn't make you even just a bit curious, they have also discovered mitochondrial DNA evidence linked to a woman in Africa dating more than a hundred thousand years ago near a gold mine. While of course we might never know for sure, the legend of the Anunnaki has made even some of the biggest skeptics question the reality of aliens. Do you want even more alien photos that were stolen from Area 51? Well, check out part four for this series. This has been one of the most popular series on our channel, so get kept up to date on this series. Click the video now!